Chapter 5. Map and PAR. In this section of the Radiant Introductory Training Series, we will discuss post-synthesis constraints and post-place and route implementation checks for Radiant projects. Chapter 5 consists of seven sections. In the first section of the chapter, Creating Constraints with Device Constraint Editor, we will introduce Radiant's Device Constraint Editor, and how it can be used to create physical constraints for a project's device. In Section 2 of the chapter, Creating PTC Constraints with Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor, Radiant's Post-Synthesis Timing Constraint Editor is introduced, and how it can be used to create timing constraints after synthesis. In Section 3 of Chapter 5, Using Physical Designer, we will discuss Radiant's Physical Designer, and what it can be used for. In the fourth section of the chapter, using Power Calculator, we will discuss Radiant's Power Calculator tool, and how it can be used to calculate the static and dynamic power consumption of a design. In the fifth section of the chapter, using Timing Analyzer, we will discuss Radiant's Timing Analyzer tool, and how it can be used to check a design's timing performance after place and route. In section six of the chapter, using Run Manager, the Run Manager tool will be introduced, as well as how it can be used to run the project flow for multiple implementations in a project. Finally, in the seventh section of this chapter, we will discuss Radiant's ECO Editor tool. Chapter 5, Section 3. Using Physical Designer. In this section of the video series, we will be discussing Radiant's Physical Designer tool, and how it can be used to debug a design after it has completed map and par. Radiant's Physical Designer is a tool that can be used to debug and floor plan a design. The Physical Designer tool has three modes. The first two modes, IO mode and placement mode, can be used after a design has completed mapping. Routing mode is the third mode, and can be used once a design has completed place and route. With that said, there are two ways the Physical Designer tool can be launched. The first way to launch the tool, is to select its icon from Radiance Toolbar, as can be seen in the figure on the slide. The second way to launch Physical Designer, is to select Tools from Radiance Menu Bar, and then the option called Physical Designer, from the drop-down that appears. Both of these methods work exactly the same, and will open the Physical Designer tool in another window of the Radiant workspace. If a project has been placed and routed, Physical Designer will look like the figure on the slide when it is opened. If Physical Designer is launched before Place and Route, then the cells in the Physical Designer window will not be populated, since they have not already been placed. This default view of Physical Designer, is its placement mode. This window contains a preview of the various sites in a design, and can be used to view how a design was placed. The exact appearance of the device and sites in this window depend on the device selected for the project. On the side of the window are the list of components in the design. Selecting a component from this list, will highlight the location of the component in the main section of the Physical Designer window. Additionally, selecting a place cell from the main view of the window will do the same thing, highlighting the component's name in the list of instances. As mentioned in the previous slide, Physical Designer consists of three modes. To switch between Physical Designer's active mode, select the arrow next to the icon from the bottom left of the toolbar, as can be seen in the figure on the screen. Doing this, will open up a drop-down allowing the Active Physical Designer mode to be switched. Once the Active Physical Designer mode is switched, the content in the main portion of the Physical Designer window will be updated for the new mode. The second Physical Designer mode we are going to discuss, is its IO mode. IO mode is similar to Placement mode, except that only the IO banks for the project's active device are visible. The purpose of this mode, is to manually modify where a design's I.O. ports are placed, after place and route is complete. For example, any unplaced ports can be directly dragged from the list of components, to a site in an I.O. bank, to place an I.O. port in that site. Another useful feature of I.O. mode, is that it can be used to view where I.O. ports were placed after place and route. Once a port has been placed to an I.O. bank, the location of its site will appear next to a port's name in parentheses. From the figure on the slide, it can be seen that the port LED0 was placed to the site H1. Another useful feature of IO mode, is that it can also be used to unplace an IO port, from where it was placed during place and route. To remove an IO port from where it was placed in an IO bank, 
right-click the name of the I.O. port from the list of instances, and select Unplace from the drop-down list of options. The site location next to a port's name should disappear from the list of instances, indicating that the that port was successfully unplaced. If any changes were made to the placement of I.O. ports in a design, those changes can directly be saved to the active PDC physical constraint file for a project. To do this, use the Save icon, or keyboard shortcut, Control s Now that we've discussed physical designer's placement and I.O. modes, we are going to review the basics for its routing mode. The final physical designer mode that we are going to review, is its routing mode. Physical designer's routing mode will display the routed design, after it has completed place and route. An important thing to remember about physical designer's routing mode, is that it is read-only and cannot be used to rearrange how a device is placed or routed. The appearance of this mode depends on a variety of factors, like the selected device, complexity of a design, and how a design was constrained. The main functionality of this mode, is to observe the longest paths in a design, to improve their timing by changing where components are placed, and how they are routed. The browser area of the routing mode window contains a list of the connections in a design. Selecting a component from this area, will highlight it in the main window, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. Now that we've discussed physical designer's three modes, we are going to briefly discuss some of the other things it can be used for. A useful feature of physical designer, is that it can be used to cross-probe a design. Users can cross-probe in physical designer by selecting any signal, component, or site. With the component selected, users should then switch the physical designer mode. The selected component will remain active in the new physical designer view, allowing users to easily observe parts of a design after it has been placed and routed. Another way users can cross-probe a design using physical designer, involves Radiance generated reports. Once an implementation has completed place and route, a timing analysis report will be generated for that stage of the process flow, as was covered in the generated reports section of the video series. In this timing report, users can observe the most critical paths in a design, and view them in physical designer's placement or routing modes by selecting either of the icons, as can be seen from the figure on the slide. Another useful feature of Radiant's physical designer tool, is that it can be used to view the most critical paths and instances in a design. Before these critical paths and instances can be observed, the settings for timing analysis must first be configured. The purpose of these timing analysis settings, are to define the criteria and the different degrees of critical paths in a design. To begin configuring the timing analysis settings, select the timing analysis icon from physical designer's toolbar, as can be seen in the figure on the slide. Selecting this icon will open the timing setting window. The timing setting window will look like the figure on the slide once it has opened. In this window, the parameters and mode of timing analysis can be configured. At the top of this window is an estimation for the worst slack in a design. This value is calculated based on the implemented design, and selected speed grade for a device. If the selected speed grade is changed, the update timing icon should be clicked again, in order to update the worst slack estimation for a design. With that said, to configure the settings for timing analysis, the first step is to select the analysis mode. From the analysis mode drop down at the top of the window, either setup or hold timing analysis can be selected to determine the type of timing analysis being performed. Next, the slack threshold should be configured for the timing analysis. These values determine which paths and instances in a design are considered critical, less critical, or not critical. To obtain a good estimation for how to configure these slack threshold values, the worst slack estimation can be used. Once the timing thresholds are set, the final step in configuring a timing analysis, is to select the connection display mode. The connection display mode controls how congestion view works once a timing analysis is configured. A preview of the two possible congestion views is displayed a little later in the video. Finally, once the timing analysis has been configured, the final step is to click the OK button to confirm the timing analysis settings. Once the timing analysis settings have been configured, the congestion of a design can be viewed by clicking the congestion icon, as can be seen in the figure on the slide. 
Selecting this icon will open the congestion setting window, allowing users to determine what level of wires and pins to include in the resultant congestion observation. Once the settings in the congestion setting window have been configured, click the OK button to view the congestion of a design. As mentioned during the timing analysis setup portion of this video, there are two congestion display modes. The first display mode, called Slack Distribution View, displays all the worst and most critical paths in a design. As can be seen from the example on the slide, this mode displays many connections, and color codes them to allow users to easily differentiate between the most critical paths in a design. The second congestion display mode is called Critical Instances View. In this mode, only the most critical instances in a design will be displayed. As can be seen from the figure on the right of the slide, this mode is slightly less cluttered than Slack Distribution View. That is because this mode only displays the most critical instances in a path, and does not display the connections between critical instances. The exact appearance of this window depends on how the timing analysis settings were configured, as the paths and instances in congestion view are color-coded according to the Slack thresholds configured there. Additionally, the timing mode of analysis is also configured in the timing analysis settings, so this window will always display either the most critical hold, or setup paths. That concludes this section of the introductory training series. To view the next video in the chapter, select the video titled Section 5.4, using Power Calculator.